singer and songwriter. He was good friends with Bob Dylan and all those boys. Uh, uh, Pete Seeger. Pete Seeger was a good Paul Hammer banjo player. Oh, so, what do I have planned today? We're going to try to get into a little bit of three-quarter time. I had a different video already recorded and stuff, and Again, I didn't like how it turned out. So I'm rerouting myself here, redoing something totally different. I'm doing a 360 of what I really originally wanted to do. And maybe um, maybe at the end of the video, I'll touch into it anyway. You know, who knows? Um, let's do some three, four time. Now here lately, up to this point, we've been doing four, four time. You know, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. In four four time, there's four beats in a measure, and the quarter note gets to be three four time, three beats per measure, and the quarter note gets to be. So you count one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Clap with me. One, two, three. One, two, three. It's a waltz. Put emphasis on the first beat. One, two, three. One, two, three. Now, you might be looking at that thinking, well, how do you do that? How do you translate that into the claw hammer frailing strum? Well, like 4-4 four, four time, it's a quarter note to eighth notes. One, two, and. Three, four time, add another set of eighth notes. So it's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. And just like that, you got a whole new rhythm, a whole new, a whole new perspective on frailing. Three quarter time. Sorry if I seem a little tired. Been working a lot lately. Um, haven't had a day off yet, and it's probably another. I'm only seven or eight days into a 14 day run, so I'm a little tired. But bear with me. It's a three quarter time. Play it with me. Ah, right, I tell you what. First, let's get ourselves. Center, ready to go, where am I going? Let's get warmed up. Let's do this the frailing strum together. Four four time. It's a quarter note two eighth note pattern. So we count. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four. Nice and relax. Good solid form. Not flicking the fingers, not dropping the wrist. Strike, strum, come, strike, strum, come. Alright. Now that we did the frail and strum for a couple of seconds there, let's practice that three quarter time. Just add an extra eighth note to it. One, two, and three, and one, 
two and three and one, two and three and one, two and three and one, two and three and one, two and three and one. Strike, strong thumb, strong thumb, strike, strong thumb, strong thumb. Play with me. Don't sit there and watch me. Three quarter, give that a try this week. It's real simple. You're just adding an extra set of eighth notes behind the frailing strum, pretty much. So one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one. Give that a try. What else was I going to go over with you today? I'll tell you. Hmm. Oh, my pre the, the last video I recorded, I already deleted it. I didn't really like how it went. Because I review these videos. See, I don't edit them as far as mistakes or anything. But I do review them for sound quality and to make sure that, you know, what I'm wanting to, the message that I want to get across to you and, and, and the teaching that I want to get across to you is, is, you know, good quality, you know. If I don't deem it very good quality, I just delete the video and start all over again. And as you can see, it's time for another haircut. Didn't take long for that hair to grow back, did it? Uh, maybe I'll get one this weekend. I can see in the camera now. I got wings again. Uh, anyway, what was I going to do? Oh. Playing and listening. And a good way for me to teach you, talk, tell you about the listening aspect and using your ears. Let me give you... banjo out of tune. What, what possibly do you have to show us about listening and say we can hear this really well and it's out of tune. As you go along playing the banjo and as you go along with the guitar or whatever instrument you like, guitar or banjo, over a period of time you grow accustomed to, to how to, the instrument sounds. You grow accustomed to what each string sounds like to the point where you can actually tune the banjo up without any tunings or anything like that. It'll be instinctive after a while. I'll prove it. Now, I know a lot of pros out there, no, you need this tuner, you need this right here. How can you tell whether you're, because this idiot can't tell whether he's playing an A or G or an F when he tunes it up. You know what, it don't matter. Don't matter. Why does it matter? Why doesn't it not matter? I'll tell you why. Because when you're at home and it's just you, and you're not a jam session, you're not on stage, you're not playing with a, a band. When you're at home, it don't really matter. Just do what you got to do to get done. If you don't have a tuner or any access to it, you just do what you got to do. So bring this up to a rough tuning to where you think it might be in the right pitch. And something about that pitch sounds right. So I'm going to leave it there. Now, after playing banjo for a while, we all know the third string 
is the same tone as the fifth string supposed to be. So you want to tune that third string up next. That's not right, is it? Here's another lesson I can give you. Listen to the tones. When you're tuning up, listen for the tones. And again, I'm teaching you this as a what if situation. What if you're out there in the middle of a, of, of a concert somewhere and you, you a, a string falls out of pitch or you got to tune up, you, your, your tuner goes dead in your banjo case. You're not, you don't have any quick access to the internet. What if? I mean, there's a lot of what ifs out there. And it can't, you know, it can't happen. Listen to the note. When, it, when the third string is in pitch with the fifth string, it's to be one continuous smooth note. When it's out of tune, you'll hear waves from the tone. You hear it? Now, just listening to this, the fifth and the third, play the fifth first, and hit the third. Does the third string sound lower pitched or higher pitched than the fifth string? It's lower. If the pitch of the string, of the third string, is lower than the fifth string, because we use the fifth string as a bass note, the tuning, so we know, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and count that string as true. So we want to tune that third string to that fifth string. So if it's lower pitched than that fifth string, which it is right now, by definition, it's referred to as being a flat note. The pitch is flat. And when the pitch is flat, you got to raise up the tone so it matches. Now, I just raised it up. Now, does the pitch on that third string seem higher or lower than the fifth string? It seems higher. And when the pitch is higher, it's sharp. So you got to bring the pitch down. Until it matches. Now, the other three strings. You still got a tune those. So, what I'm gonna do next, go to the fourth string, bring it up to the fifth fret. Because the fourth string put at the fifth fret is the same pitch as the fifth and the third string. And it already sounds lower. So I'm gonna go ahead and automatically assume that I gotta bring this pitch up. The pitch on that fifth string sound lower or higher than the pitch on that fifth string. It sounds lower. So that note, that means I'm still flat. I've got to raise up the tone. The string a little more. Play now. all three strings together and it should be one continuous note when there's one continuous note move on let's go to the second string now the second string go to tune it up go to the third string on the fourth fret now does the pitch on the second string sound higher than the pitch on the third string? Yes, it does. So that means what? The pitch is sharp. We have to bring the note down. Now try it. That's one continuous note. 
when you get it done, you might have to adjust a little bit. It might be a little bit out, but it won't be that hard to do, and I'll show you. Now, the first string, you could do one or both, two, uh, one or two ways you could do that. You can approach that. You could tune it up to the fourth string, since it's supposed to be the same pitch, or you can do it by the second string on the third fret. Now try it. That's what it was the fourth string fell flat again. Yeah, move it in, sound right. Now, let's tune up that first string. First string sounds lower pitched than that of the pitch on the second string. So that means the note is flat. We'll have to raise it up. Play them together. Bye, y'all.